Good afternoon. We are going to be starting Skyscape's free webinar, Creating a Culture of NCLEX Preparation. Today's presentation will be presented by Dr. Tim Bristol. He's a faculty and student success specialist. He works with a number of colleges and universities and resides in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tim has been utilizing technology in the classroom, clinical, and lab setting for over 20 years. I will now hand the floor over to Tim. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, talk with faculty today about how we might do this. Um, when it comes to NCLEX preparation, so many times we view that as an event in our curriculum. And I, I really think that after we do a little exploration today, you might see how it would be possible to create a culture of preparation, if you will, for NCLEX, as opposed to it just being an episodic event, if you will. So our goals here are to develop some manageable strategies. And I highlight the word manageable because many times <laughs> nurses do everything not just 100%, but 150%. And so um, we have to keep that goal in mind that we are 150% kind of people, but we have to make things manageable. And how do we do that? Well, one of the key areas goes to our second objective is creating instructional design using tools that, that can help us get there more efficiently, but just as importantly, if not more importantly, more effectively. So let's go to our first polling question, and I think Kristen's going to list that for us. Okay, when should so go we ahead begin? and answer. Okay, there you go. Thank you. When should we begin with exploring NCLEX with our students? Should we begin in the first half of our program, the second half of our program? Should we begin during the NCLEX review? When should this when should this begin? I'm gonna let you chime in there and then I'll I'll share with you what the results are. This is a good discussion topic that faculty should have at least once a semester, if you will. And the reason I say that um, is because we have to we have to keep ourselves focused on um, what is the big goal. Many times we forget what the big goal is, especially if I'm really busy. And I've got two exams to write this week. I've got 80 care plans to grade. Oh yeah, I'm going to clinical two days this week, filling in for a colleague one day. The other day is my normal week. What is our big goal? Okay, we have our voting. Can you see it, Tim? I cannot. OK, Sorry so that. the first half of the program, we have 97% people saying that it's in the first half of the program. For the second half of the program, we have 15%. And during the NCLEX review, we have a 10%. OK. Well, it seems like a majority of you are um, are, are on board with, with my thoughts on this. I see the results now. Thank you, Kristen. Um, I'm with you. I really think that we need to start early. And, and here's why. When we think about how the NCLEX is built, one area that we have to keep in mind is, is what we call the practice analysis. Now, the practice analysis is delivered to 12,000 new nurses. And the definition of new nurse is someone who's taken the NCLEX and passed it within the past three to six months. And when you look at that practice analysis, they ask two questions. What do you do at work most often? And what do you do at work that's most important? And based on the answer to those two questions, they adjust the NCLEX test plan. They, um, they give it to subject matter experts to uh, uh, review questions. They, they talk about what, what's a good assessment to help determine if this is going to be a good practitioner, if this person is going to be a quality practitioner as they move into their nursing career. 
When you look at the results of that assessment, of that practice analysis, what you will quickly see is the syllabus for your fundamentals course. You'll quickly see that what, lists, what is most often rated as most important, what's most often rated as most frequent is your fundamental syllabus. When you look at the test plan, you're going to see integrated processes such as the nursing care plan, uh, I'm sorry, the nursing process, teaching, communication, documentation, uh, caring, culture, and spirituality. You're going to see the client needs, the eight client needs, such as safety and infection control, health promotion and maintenance, reduction of risk potential, psychosocial. The other thing that you're going to see when you start looking at NCLEX is conceptual learning. NCLEX has always been conceptual. Why? Because the bedside is conceptual for nurses. So now I have some challenges. As I look at the NCLEX test plan, I have some challenges. I first of all have to say what's going to be important across the curriculum. And when we look at the NCLEX test plan, I go to, I go to fundamentals, at the bedside as being important across the curriculum. I get this question a lot. Hey, Tim, how do you write a good test item? How do you write a good test item? My number one answer, does it sound like a nurse at the bedside? If it does not sound like a nurse at the bedside, that test item should not be on your exam. It can be a fun pre-class activity. It can be a fun pre-class quiz or, or during class game, but it should not be uh, at the bedside. Now, when we think about NCLEX, what I'm proposing here, what I'm proposing is that, yes, we have it every student, every class, every semester. We have something about NCLEX. Now, why is this? Because NCLEX says, it's not what they know, and when I say NCLEX says, <laughs> I'm referring to National Council, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. It's not what graduate knows, it's how they know. They are looking, can we create an assessment here, an assessment about processing that, that, that determines whether or not your student is good, is competent, does well with critical thinking, clinical reasoning, clinical judgment, clinical decision making, whatever you choose to put in here. A good activity that I encourage faculty to consider during your next faculty meeting, hand out note cards to every person in your faculty and say, write down your definition of critical thinking. <laughs> as many note cards as you hand out, that's as many different definitions as you're going to get back. And, and when it comes to processing, one thing that we have to do is look for opportunities to give our students tools to help them consistently and confidently assess their ability when it comes to critical thinking. Now remember, fundamentals is the most important course in your curriculum. Yes, I did say that. And fundamentals needs to be in every course across the curriculum with critical thinking being that hub for fundamentals. They need, to, they need to demonstrate critical thinking in fundamentals and in every course with fundamentals across the curriculum. So we've got to find out a way to consistently, consistently help them tackle critical thinking. Okay? And, and I'll tell my students, I'll tell my students, I'll tell, I'll tell your students when I'm standing in front of them, it doesn't matter what the instructor does. You are still ultimately responsible for mastering your critical thinking skills developing your critical thinking skills, managing clinical reasoning everywhere you go in the curriculum, every experience you have in the lab, every clinical engagement. You students are responsible for that because we need to help them form habits. We need to help them form habits where they are, they are saying, did I, did I critically think through this process? How am I doing with my critical thinking? Where am I with my critical thinking? A lot of this comes from repetition and forming habits. And, and as I think about as I think about this idea of forming habits, repetition allows me to do that, but the students have to be able to see that there is repetition here. I'll hear sometimes faculty say, 
you know, um, and you can you can go ahead and put this polling question up, Kristen, if you if you would please. I'll hear faculty say that yes, thank you. Um, yes, indeed, we all have different definitions of critical thinking, and this helps the student. This helps the student because they get to see different ways of doing it, of, of doing critical thinking, of, of managing clinical reasoning. And unfortunately, that doesn't bear out all the time, when you, especially when you look at instructional design theory, when you look at pedagogical theory. When it comes to critical thinking, I view it as a muscle to be exercised. And <clears throat> I, you know, I know that when I go to exercise, I do like some variety here and there, but there are those core activities when I exercise. There are those core activities where I have a habit that I've formed, and I fall into that habit, and it allows me to reach my activity exercise health goals quicker. Okay? Let's take a look at how you did here and, and what, what some of your thoughts are. Do all of your faculty in the program define critical thinking the same way? Um, we've got a, a small percentage say yes, um, about half of us say no, and then some of us say sometimes. And, and this is just a challenge, and I, I, again, I, I'm not trying to say, you know, we're doing it all wrong. I am trying to say, is there a way that we can come up with, if not a common definition of critical thinking, a common strategy where students can consistently approach their critical thinking and say, am I there. Remember what National Council says. It's not what they know, it's how they know. We want to create this culture of preparation for NCLEX. Now, um, I, I talk about this a lot around the country and just even last week um, in, in uh, multiple cities, uh, a number of faculty talk about their concern. Are we teaching to the test? Are we teaching to the test? And we have to remember, we have to remember that, that and you've got to deal with this. You can't let this just be some underlying, oh, I feel so artificial and fake like I'm teaching to the test. When you're creating a culture of NCLEX preparation, you're creating a culture of always focusing on where is your student headed and yes, NCLEX is where they're all headed, but what is NCLEX? NCLEX is the bedside. And when I say the bedside, yes, I mean that community experience. I mean that, um, that engagement where they go downtown and they serve in a homeless shelter, that engagement where they go to hospice and they go to a patient's home, that, that clinical experience where they're truly at a bedside, yes, that OR experience where they're observing. Yes, that labor and delivery experience. When I, when I say the bedside, I just want you to know that I, I'm, I'm referring to their practice as a brand new baby nurse. Think about, think about your instructional design. Think about the strategies that you use. And think about the tools that you have. Is there, is there something in these strategies, in these tools, then that can help us start to begin to build this culture, if you will. I'm always looking for ways of empowering faculty in this adventure. Because when it comes to creating a culture, one of the big barriers is that we're all teaching different content, different concepts, different classes. And, and I believe that we have a tool here that even though the students are going from class to instructor to semester to you name it. Clinical experiences are all over town and um, you name it. I think we have a tool here that might be able to help our students start to develop these habits related to critical thinking. So just um, a, a polling question here for you. When do you teach skills in your curriculum? I like using skills as a way of, of helping my students focus on their personal development with critical thinking for two reasons. One reason is that skills is part of fundamentals, which is essential to NCLEX. It's central 
to NCLEX. I will talk to four semester students a lot who are, who are struggling either to pass the program and or who have struggled with failing NCLEX. A common theme that you'll notice when you're testing these students when you're talking to these students about weaknesses and strengths, a common theme is that they've left fundamentals behind. We, we cover fundamentals, we cover skills in that first semester, and, and we've left it behind. Um, it's not as emphasized as they move across the curriculum. And, and yes, we tell them, please do not sell back your fundamentals text. You're going to need to use it again. Some of them don't listen. <laughs> it's like they, they check that box off. We've got to find a way. We've got to find a way to help them carry those fundamentals with us across the curriculum. And, um, and we can see here that uh, about a third of you uh, cover uh, skills in, in that first semester, in that first term. Uh, uh, about a third of you cover skills in that uh, first half of the program. And about a third of you, a little over a third, um, sorry, I'm really bad at math, <laughs> cover skills um, all semesters across the curriculum. Let's take a look at how Skills Hub can help us ensure that, that fundamental principles, key fundamental concepts are in your student's hand every day of lecture, lab, and clinical across the curriculum. So there's some basic components to um, the Skills Hub that, that I want to make sure that you understand. And that's the first component is, is the learning component. The second component is the log, which is an assessment of uh, learning. And then the third component is actually practicing with that. And, and so let's, let's start thinking about how the learning component works here. First of all, um, when I'm talking about these, the essentials related to skills, one mistake that we often make when we teach skills is the students get into this mindset, I've got to memorize the steps and perform that, that, that memorized list, perform those, those steps, if you will, um, when I go into the checkoff and, and I'll be good to go. And, and essentially what they've done, and, and students aren't doing this maliciously, it's just how they survive nursing school, they've turned a skill into a low-level learning activity. They've memorized the list, they repeat that memorized list, boom, I'm done. <laughs> I've struggled with this teaching skills uh, um, in the first eight weeks of a semester, and then in the second eight weeks of the semester, having those same students in, in, in a fundamentals, in a, in a uh, a basic initial clinical experience. And we'll go to perform a skill and, and the student will be struggling mightily in clinical who did well on the checkoff in lab. And I, and I kid you not, in this one particular experience that I'm remembering, it was three weeks that the student did the checkoff, did well with the checkoff in lab. Three weeks later, I have them in clinical. They're like, I've never done this before. I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. Yes, you did. Um, when we talk about skills, the first thing that we have to do is, is start to help students connect the evidence base with the skill that they're performing. As we help them start to think about the evidence base of this skill, the student is less likely to just say, okay, I memorized the steps to this procedure. I memorized how this looks. But, but we actually start to point them towards for this particular skill, what's the evidence-based practice and why is the evidence-based the way it is? With Skills Hub, your student starts to get that. They start to go into critical elements. And, and thinking about why are these elements here, well, as they move into the procedure, this is where the critical thinking becomes a part of it. When they're going to their handheld, when they're accessing this tool on the fly, whether it's in the middle of the lab, they're seeing that current evidence base. And, and when, they, when they encounter on NCLEX, when they encounter a skill or the opportunity for a skill, they're going to have to go to that evidence base. They're going to have to think about where is the evidence base here. NCLEX writes questions not about the perfect way to do a procedure, but NCLEX presents questions to the student about where could be the mistake 
where could be the problems, if you will, in this procedure. Okay, they, they're not going to ask for the exact list of steps. Okay, they're going to they're going to say where's the potential for a mistake, an error, patient injury during this procedure. So so Skills Hub helps your student to start to think about this skill more globally right out of the gate. When you think about how people learn, when you think about how people learn, the best way to make sure that I've learned a concept well, I've learned a skill well, is multiple modalities. In Skills Hub, they pulled that together. I'm doing the psychomotor. I've got the cognitive piece here that includes that evidence base. I've got a video that gives me a quick glance at how to do this skill effectively, how to do this skill with quality and safety in mind. And oh yeah, by the way, it's all on the student's phone. They're literally holding it in their hand, no matter where they're at. And here's the opportunity, here's the opportunity for fundamentals to be carried across the curriculum, literally. Not figuratively, but literally, because it's in their hand. And so now when I'm covering the principles of asepsis in my fundamentals lecture, I'm going to ask them to open up their skills hub, take a look at intradermal injections, and tell me where is asepsis when you're doing an intradermal injection. What does that look like? How do you manage the risk for infection when you're doing an injection like this? How do you help a student, I'm sorry, a patient learn about managing infection when it comes to injections? And, and what's going to happen on NCLEX is they're going to see this question, and, and it's really not about just an intradermal injection. It's about how to prevent infection, how to teach a patient to prevent infection. Or maybe you see another practitioner who's performed a skill inappropriately because their skills hub is in their hand, you can have a true bedside deep in uh, discussion even during lecture because they can open up that very tool that they're going to use or have used in the skills lab when they're performing this skill. Essentially, I'm looking at skills hub as a handheld tool for having critical thinking across the curriculum. Okay. Now, the, the, the part of Skills Hub that really helps the student start to track what, what has my journey been like is going to be the log. They have the Skills Hub log related to, in this case, intradermal injections. They have the Skills Hub log. It's right there on their phone. And now they can say that, yes, I'm learning this skill. I'm in lab. It's the first time I've learned this skill or I'm doing OK with this skill. You fill in the blank. And they can actually have their instructor sign off on that component. How have you done in lab? How have you done in clinical? Many times when we think about skills, it's check, done, I've completed it in lab. Okay? And some programs do a pretty good job of taking that skill, that same check off in some way, shape, or form into clinical. But most of the time, it's a very cumbersome, tricky process. Are you one of those programs that has over 20 clinical adjuncts teaching in your program? Some of you have over 40 and even 60 clinical adjunct instructors teaching in your program. How can you truly, how can you truly say, yes, this student, this student performed the skill in lab and was successful or had these, these issues and then say the same thing about clinical? Well, you now have a tool that the students, again, it's on their phone. They're carrying Skills Hub with them. And they're moving from place to place across the curriculum. The student is revisiting the exact same, the exact same tools that helped them critically think through this process initially. They keep revisiting it. And if they run into problems, if they run into problems in an environment and they're not with that initial instructor, they're not with that initial experience related to that skill. They get to go back to the same explanation. There's that repetition. I can now use, I can now focus on developing my critical thinking skills better 
because I have repetition here. I'm going back to that same way of doing an intradermal injection. And I'm just using intradermal injection as an example here. The next part of the log that I think really, really does help my students when it comes to, um, when it comes to the skill is that feedback. What kind of feedback am I getting from my instructor? And can I go back to that feedback? And can I do this on the fly? A lot of times, I'll give my students feedback um, on, uh, in, in, in skills, and it stays right there. And think about the last time you gave students feedback on a skill. What did they do with that feedback? It was written on a form. It was typed into a Word document. It stayed in that environment. Now, the, uh, the log allows them to take that feedback forward with them, because hopefully they're practicing it in different environments. The practice part of this is, is where they can keep going back, how did I do with this, where did I do this, and, and what can I plan on next as I'm trying to perfect this skill, or more importantly, in my opinion, I keep camping out on this, I go back to the critical thinking. In this particular in this particular example, the um, the instructor um, has a passcode. They can log in. Um, they can see uh, whether or not the student has done the skill, or supposedly, or log that they did the skill, and then they can share feedback with that student. All of this, and I'll show you in just a moment, is also kept online, where the student and the instructor can go back and revisit. This, this whole process, if you will. So uh, e even if the instructor's not there physically present with the student, they can log in and see these details online. The next part that I think, again, is really important, re especially related to critical thinking, is the quizzing related to each skill. And this is, this is where the, the, the culture of NCLEX, if you will, of preparation, can be really powerful. The student isn't just memorizing that list related to that skill and hopefully performing the skill correctly, okay, which we of course want them to do, but the student now gets an engagement that looks like NCLEX related to this skill. And it's directly related to the skill and again it's on their handheld so they can go back to it at any time. If you're teaching clinical and a skill came up during clinical, in the post-conference environment, ask your students to pull out their skills hub during post-conference, open up to that quizzing component, and have two or three get on a phone or don't, don't, I don't like them doing this individually in post-conference when they can be talking about it. Watch the conversations that they have. For, in this example, which infection control standard causes the most injuries? to nurses in the delivery of an intradermal injection. They're going to talk through these, op these options here and be thinking about what happened in clinical today. What happened in clinical today. And that is so powerful when it comes to critical thinking. So now we have the tool. Let's just lay this out. Now we have the tool where they learn the skill in their hand in the clinical environment. And they're looking at they're looking at an actual NCLEX style question related to the skill that they just performed in the clinical environment. All this is on their handheld. You'll notice here um, that they can, they can also get a quick view. Are there questions that they struggled with? And you can see here in this particular example, this student struggled with questions two, three, and four for this particular quiz, for this particular skill. It's a really powerful way to not only make NCLEX prep um, a, a cultural component of your curriculum, but also critical thinking. A lot of times our clinical instructors, our adjunct clinical instructors, um, voice the frustration that they don't feel like they can make clinical a true high-level critical thinking experience, or they don't have the tools to do it, or they don't know what's going on in our curriculum. Having a tool like this in the hand of every student across the curriculum, your clinical instructors now have a way of going right to the critical thinking components that your students have been using everywhere else in the curriculum. They can use it there in the clinical environment. 
And yes, if the students can't use their phones in clinical, not a problem, not a problem. They can uh, put their phones away, put them in the locker, and then in that post-conference experience, that's when they pull them out. And they can go to the Skills Hub, and then they can review the skills. In, in if, if it happens during clinical and they need to get to their Skills Hub, I'll just send them to the break room and say, okay, you can't bring your phone out on the floor, but you can go review this skill on your Skills Hub before you even come out on the floor. Show the, show the faculty in the clinical environment that, that you know, this is, this is what we did with critical thinking across the curriculum. Here's how you can do it in clinical. These quizzes also give us a, a way to quickly monitor and um, maybe even perform an early intervention. And I'll show you in just a moment um, what some of that tracking uh, it looks like. So if we see a student struggling with these um, quiz questions, that might be a way of, of talking to that student you know, ahead of time and saying, you know, you're doing pretty well uh, memorizing your checklist, but I've noticed you're getting these questions wrong, right? Or maybe you haven't answered these questions and you're in semester three. Um, the, 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 uh, the instructors can go in and look at this. Um, this is where we need to do some intervention ahead of time. And if, you're, if your program um, has licensed the actual platform for Skills Hub, the faculty can go in and, and, and do some of this monitoring and early intervention. Okay? So in this particular example, the faculty get a quick view, if you will, of um, who has mastered the learning or at least completed the learning um, for the skills that have been assigned to this module. In this case, the module is fundamentals. Um, how many of the students have practiced it or log that they've practiced in the skills log? Um, did you practice this in lab? And have you done it in clinic, in the clinical environment? What, what is this? Where are we with that? You can have this quick look here. So for instance, Maxwell, um, he's attempted um, or, or at least gone through 11 of the, the uh, skills modules in the skills hub. He's practiced seven of them in lab and, and done four of them in a clinical environment. Okay, so we might say, hey, we need, to, we need to meet with Maxwell and say, you know, you need to kind of pick up the pace here, look for opportunities, or we can talk to the clinical instructor if you're not the clinical instructor and say, wow, Maxwell, we've got a few of these skills here that we need to definitely touch on, especially in clinical in some way, shape, or form. Let's look for those opportunities. Then we take a look at the quizzing. Maxwell has um, attempted uh, 14 questions, um, and he got nine of them correct and five of them wrong, okay? So again, this helps me prioritize. This helps me prioritize when I'm talking to Maxwell. What do you need? Now, this particular student summary, you'll notice are multiple students here. This is only going to be seen by the faculty member. It's not going to be something that all students can see how other students are doing. However, on the, the individual student report, this is where the students can drill down, where faculty can drill down, where, where is this particular student with each of the different skills that are going to come up in the Skills Hub. And, and this is really powerful and very telling, because you can now start to see um, here the, the areas where the student might be, um, might be particularly weak or hasn't attempted something. The other part that I want to point out here is this serves, if you will, as, as somewhat of a portfolio for the student. They can say, yes, I went through learning related to, you know, for in this case, incentive spirometer, and I did practice this in lab, and I did practice this in clinical. However, when it comes to suctioning an endotracheal tube, endotracheal tube um, I was able to practice it in lab, but I haven't had that clinical experience yet. This becomes that student's portfolio of performance. But it doesn't just stop there. It goes into the quizzing, where we have the critical thinking questions. And I can start to ask myself, where are my strengths and weaknesses as a student? I can know what I know and know what I don't know. So for instance, here I got question number one on chest physiotherapy. I got question number one correct the first time. Question number two, I eventually got it correct, but did not get it correct the first time. Um, question number four, I've never gotten it correct, okay? 
I can actually go back to these questions at any time and revisit them. Or maybe it's been a period of time, say over the summer when I didn't have clinical, I didn't have class. I come back, I'm starting clinical now in, in semester three. I'm starting clinical again. I can use this kind of as a way to prioritize. What do I need to be focusing on? When I become a senior in the nursing program and I, and I reflect back, I can actually um, go back and look through here. Where, where are all the red checks? Did I have a lot of red checks in one particular module, one particular set of skills in Skills Hub? And make that my focus. Because remember senior nursing student, remember a nursing student that's about to graduate. Fundamentals, as in what you see on the screen here, fundamentals is the most important course according to NCLEX. So find ways of going back and addressing some of your weaknesses. And oh yeah, because it's on your phone, these questions you can go back and address any time, such as you're sitting on the train for your 45-minute commute to school. You're sitting in the car. You're, you're at your kid's soccer game. You can pull this out and go back and revisit these. Faculty, when you're writing test items, take a look at what Skills Hub has in here as a way of helping you start to focus on fundamentals no matter what you're teaching. Okay. Then we have feedback related to the overall skills log. Okay, we have the feedback that the instructor has entered. Remember when the instructor um, enters the passcode and, and goes in and enters that feedback or the instructor can do it online here. Here's where they get to select the good, poor, excellent. And here's where they get to enter feedback. And not only can they type in feedback that your student can view, but also there's gonna be audio feedback that your student can hear. When we're thinking about giving feedback, and I just spent an entire day um, with a group of faculty talking on about different forms of assessment. When we can add audio and the student can hear inflection, the student can hear you verbally talking, that really can add a lot, if you will, to that, that feedback. That really can add a lot to your student's understanding. So this audio component is going to be very powerful for your students when it comes to understanding how to develop, not just with the skill, but also with critical thinking. Um, as you think about accountability, okay, and, and how do I help faculty, how do I help students how do I develop this culture across the NCLEX preparation across the curriculum? This is where the tracking becomes very powerful. The students can look back at their progress. The faculty can help keep students accountable. And when I'm counseling a student, I can say, okay, open up your skills hub, whether it's on their phone or they open up the, the, um, uh, the feedback tracking online on a laptop, I can say, now, let's help you start to learn how to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Not just because I want you to pass, not just because I want you to be successful in our program, but because that's what a professional does. The students and, the, and the, the faculty can focus on weaknesses over time, and that's efficiency when it comes to learning. As you think about the portability of this, what you're really doing is, is helping to remove a barrier for this accountability, if you will, across the curriculum. Because it's in the student's hand, because it's portable, we truly can bring this to every class across the curriculum. Another tool that I want to talk to you about is NCLEX Question of the Week. And here's where we give the students the power to start to study more efficiently, more effectively. And I've got a, a polling question here for you. I'm going to let Kristen put that up for us. But think about your students. Think about the students that you're teaching right now, the students that you're teaching next week, the students that you have in clinical and class. Do they know how to study efficiently and effectively? And I'm going to let you vote here. Uh, the voting isn't working, Tim, so we'll just okay. let people think about it. <laughs> Not a problem. When you get a chance in the next week or two or the next semester of classes have already ended for you, ask your students, how do you study? 
and then ask your students, have you found out, have you found any ways to save time studying? Many times students, when they're studying, they look for, do I recognize this? Does this sound familiar? And they will actually spend more time studying things that they're comfortable with that sound familiar. I'll hear it all the time. I read the book twice. I read the book twice and I still failed the exam, so there, try to fix me. Bet you can't. Our students need our help. And the, the NCLEX question of the week is one way to help them because what this does is it helps the student know what they don't know. And it puts, in, it puts it in a fun environment. Our students are all into social media, and this is not a generational thing. Please don't think, yeah, those young students are into social media. Not the case. A majority of our students are into social media, regardless of age, as a way of connecting with their support groups. And for many of those students, that support group is indeed other students. So here we have NCLEX Question of the Week, where they can, they can engage it through social media, but they're getting high-level questions that allow them to focus on different essentials when it comes to nursing practice. Okay? Here is where they can, if, if they're having particular difficulty in a certain area, whether it's Bloom's Taxonomy and Application and Analysis, whether their, their program is giving them feedback based on the NCLEX client needs. Maybe it's a system. Maybe, maybe I, I'm in um, med surge class right now and we're focused on GI. Maybe it's the nursing process. And, and our instructors said that last semester, according to the standardized exam, your cohort is very weak in the implementation part of the nursing process. Students can focus, with question of the week, they can focus on their own personal weakness because they get to select the category. They get to select the category and they get to go right to that part of the category and look at questions that are categorized as such. And they can address their weakness. This is, this is really nice because it shows up on social media, it can show up on their personal device, they can get to it quickly and easily, and they get a little bit of competition because they get to look at the leaderboard, they get to talk to their friends, hey, how did you do with this question, and they get instant feedback. This is a way of helping your students learn how to learn. I like using this tool as a way of getting my students engaged during class. When you use this during class, you're role modeling for your students a study strategy that they can then implement anywhere, that they can go to anywhere. I hear it all the time, yeah, Tim, we told the students to use this tool and nobody did, or very few people did. Or the students that failed the exam, we asked them about, have you been doing question of the week? They say, what was that? One of the best ways to help your students, to help promote student success and retention is to use these tools during class. Take five minutes and tell them to find a question of the week that applies to what they just learned in lecture in the past 20 minutes. And that's going to start role modeling for them strategies that can really help them when it comes to success, not just in your class, but also on NCLEX. All right, so I've given you a couple of ideas on how to create a culture of NCLEX preparation across your curriculum. Um, I'd really like you if, you, if you wouldn't mind right now, type in any questions, ideas, concerns that you have in, your, um, in the uh, a chat pod there, the chat window. I'd like to hear from you. What, what are some of your struggles when it comes to addressing NCLEX in this way? What are some of your struggles when it comes to helping students and other faculty as they're trying to, as you're trying to say, you know what, NCLEX isn't just, we, we prepare for this, if you will. Um, I apologize, I thought I was opening the chat window. <laughs> That's not the chat window. When it comes to um, addressing um, NCLEX, how do we get people out of the mindset that it's just that event at the end of the program? that it is really an evidence base for where your students are headed. 
All right, so let's see what we have here for comments. And if I'm missing any of them, uh, Kristen, if you wouldn't mind sharing those, I'd appreciate that. Um, one question related to um, Skills Hub and the um, uh, the portability piece of it. Uh, we often think about, well, some students don't have uh, internet or some students might not have a smartphone. Um, this is where we have to ask ourselves, what are the what are the what's the value of this particular tool in in helping your students? succeed across the curriculum. And I, and I do want to remind you that a tool like Skills Hub, because of the technology and how advanced it is, will work on any device that's a smartphone or that's a simple tablet. Um, they don't have to go out and buy a $500 iPad. Okay, Those tablets in this day and age, those tablets that you're getting that are, that are relatively inexpensive, close to $100, those will work with Skills Hub just fine. And so if you truly have a student that, that, is not, that does not have a smartphone or doesn't have access to those resources, um, they, can, they can get access to it through one of those less expensive devices. The other part that I want to point out here, as with any technology, if you put it in your syllabus that it's a required part of their book purchase, if you will, a required purchase, in most cases, Financial aid will kick in. It will be considered in their budget when it comes to financial aid. Other thoughts, questions, ideas? Um, we talked about adjunct instructors a bit earlier. When it comes to helping adjunct instructors with a tool like Skills Hub, one of the best strategies that you can use is make sure that you're using Skills Hub during lecture and lab often. So that when the student goes to the clinical environment and the, inst the clinical instructor, all they know is that they're using Skills Hub and they're supposed to be using Skills Hub during clinical, the clinical instructor is kind of nervous because they, they maybe have not, they only got the orientation to Skills Hub or they didn't get to use Skills Hub um, extensively or they may have forgotten it's been a period of time since they used Skills Hub. If you're using Skills Hub with your students every day in lecture, every day in lab, frequently with simulation, the student then can help that clinical adjunct and go, yep, that's right, this is our skills hub, and the process is we go into the break room, we look up our skill that we're about to perform, um, uh, providing care for our patient, we look that up, and, and we just kind of flip through the, um, the uh, performance there, the performance checklist, and, and, and we review it, we, we take a look at the video, and then we go and perform the skill with our patient. There you have it. They've, they've now helped out the clinical adjunct in using this tool. And then after, after clinical in that post-conference environment, when you want them to go through some of those quizzing questions, the students are going to know exactly what to do because this is what you do every day in lab, every day in class, every day in simulation. So helping your adjuncts out oftentimes comes from consistent, consistent use of these tools across the curriculum. All right. Any other questions here, Kristen, that I'm missing? Are you seeing them as they come in, Tim? I, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm, I'm uh, one of the question, here. one of the questions was, um, does Skills Hub library contain a skills library? Is it something that can be modified or customized to a degree? Oh, okay. The, Go ahead. So yes. Um, Skyscape does provide a library of skills, um, and that can be customized if um, the school chooses to license the platform. They can choose to modify a skill that already exists. They can choose to add a module, say they want to choose a labor and delivery or maternity module or something else. They could add that, so it's, that is fully customizable. Sure. And if I can speak to that real quick, Kristen. Um, 
when you're when you're starting off with with Skills Hub, I encourage you to look at the library that they've put together initially before you start doing a lot of a lot of modifying. Um, the the development team that put this together real crackerjacks when it comes to what do you absolutely need. So don't. Um, a lot of times I, I get fearful that you're going to feel like you have to completely customize this before you can implement it. Go ahead and try it out a semester as, as, and, and using what's there because what's there is really powerful before you feel like you have to completely customize it for your own program. Now if you need to, you need to dive in, but the best, the best impact from Skills Hub is going to come by you starting to use it um, right away, um, multiple instructors um, being on that same team, as in we're using it in class, we're using it in, in lab, we're using it in simulation, we're using it in clinical. So, sorry, Kristen, you pulled my chain, got on my soapbox. That's okay. There. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Looks like the mentoring faculty looks like mentoring faculty is essential. Could this be used as part of a orientation as well as continuing professional development? Hmm. Um, if I understand this question correctly, um, mentoring faculty is, is important. And, and this tool, when you implement Skills Hub, I, just, I think they're talking about Skills Hub, correct? Um, when you implement Skills Hub, this tool acts as mentoring because the, the faculty are going to see it across the curriculum. And I'm, I'm not saying it's replacing mentoring, but it acts as a mentoring tool. And so, for instance, if I'm mentoring a, a junior faculty and I'm saying, okay, you've got your lectures figured out, now you need to make it real in some way, shape, or form and bring clinical to class. Why don't you have the students during lecture pull out Skills Hub, take a look at a skill that is associated with what you've been lecturing on, and then talk about how this concept might really show up in clinical, might really show up in lab. Okay, so this in and of itself, this tool, because Skills Hub is, is engaging and brings the bedside, wherever that student's holding that phone, whether it's in lecture, lab, or clinical, you've got the bedside there. Um, it could help that, that novice, that, that junior educator figure out a way to make their, their class times more realistic. And that's a big deal when it comes to creating a culture of NCLEX prep. Did, did that answer the question? <laughs> Um, I believe, let's see, Yeah. I guess Barbara could say whether it answered the question that she okay. was asking. So if it, if it didn't answer your question, Barbara, please um, reach out to yeah. us. We can always uh, let you know. She said that sounds good. Um, another question was, are Skills Hub and Question of the Week um, sold together? And the answer to that question is uh, Skills Hub and Aconclex Question of the Week um, have a free component that you can try out. It's available online, um, the NCLEX Question of the Week at skyscape.com slash NCLEXQOW, also on our social media sites. Um, and then the uh, Skills Hub, there's a free app that you can have a look at, and the power of the platform with all the reporting and the things where you can customize, that does have a price and that's dependent on um, the, the program and stuff like that. So if you have questions about that, um, if you want to have a full demo of the platform, you can reach us at sales at skyscape.com. Uh, to learn about all of the Skyscape offerings, you can go to skyscape.com slash groups. This webinar will be available on demand um, in probably 24 to 48 hours at skyscape.com slash webinar 2016. Uh, if you have any questions that didn't get answered that you might think of at looking at stuff, you can either email webinar at skyscape.com or sales at skyscape.com and we'll get back to you with an answer. This concludes our webinar for today. I want to thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your semester.